never been before. It's the first time. It's just I'm so glad that he's opening our minds to the reality around us. The world has got a lot of problems at the moment. I think even the people who are taking news from the main media are aware of a lot of problems out there. And the real way that we can solve them is by opening up awareness. And things like this event are going to do that. A friend of mine died of having swine flu vaccine recently. So I want to help as many people realise that... Um, you know, this world that we're living is not what we thought it is, and it's quite important that we um, get the word out. I do believe there is an evil cabal who are interested in power, money and control, and I have a lot of respect for David for not being scared and speaking out against it. I admire him. I think he's very brave. I just want to see, see him doing his, his thing. I want David to, to tell us all, man, you know. I want him to talk about the, uh, the moon being a spaceship. I want him to talk about the future, which he's so positive about, you know, with the with the, what's coming and how humanity is going to remember who it is, you know, and, and see that fork in the road. We actually stop believing all the mainstream education and media and, and start to wake up to the, the true magnitude of who we are and how we create reality, you know. He's done a lot of quality research and he's also applied a kind of philosophy to it as well. You can take it or leave it, but he's putting it out there for everyone and he puts himself at risk of doing it and we all own a big time for that. Ladies and gentlemen, David Icke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you. Good turnout then. Crikey. I remember talking to um, people in uh, telephone boxes once and having room to walk around all those years ago. But amazing things have happened since. My thanks first of all to the extraordinary Linda for putting this event on and Sean and all the team. And my God, it's 20 years since my head blew off. 20 years on, I hope I've contributed one thing, and that is to let people realize that if you believe in something, if you keep putting one foot in front of the other and don't get caught in defending yourself or feeling sorry for yourself or falling for the fear that what other people think of you because you're saying something that's different, then if you keep putting that one foot in front of the other, you get somewhere. It's when you stop that everything stops. And if we believe in what we are saying, and what we're saying has validity, then eventually it will be shown to be so. But that process only plays out if we keep walking. And you realize over 20 years that whatever people are saying about you today, they'll say something else tomorrow, so don't get caught up in what they're saying today, whatever today is. Because the fear of what other people think is the state of perception that stops people making a difference. Because you can only make a difference in a world of uniformity if you operate outside that uniformity, and that's always going to get you laughter, it's always going to get you ridicule and condemnation. 
And we either want to make a difference and we take that on and say whatever, or we don't, in which case nothing changes. And when I look back at this last 20 years, I, I can see very clearly in my life what, what happens to all of us. You come into the world and then you go through a series of experiences and they seem to be random. They don't seem to be connected. Well, this is happening now and that's happening then and this is happening today. But when you look back, you see how it's been a journey of connected, often fantastically synchronistic experiences that are leading us in a certain direction. If we choose to go, if we don't choose to go, then we just run on the spot, which is where most of humanity is because of the way the system is structured. So when I look at the different aspects of my life, I see the chain of events that's led to now. I mean, this was me when I came into the world. I was bloody happy to be here, I was. <laughs> Mom, Earth's a shitty place, we want to go home. And I felt like that as a kid, to be honest. But then my life unfolded and I became a professional footballer. Have you seen them teeth? When I saw that bloody picture, I've seen them teeth. Last time I saw a set of teeth like that, it was winning the Grand National. <laughs> but the football side of it, which just seemed to be, I want to be a footballer. Actually, because I ended up playing professional football with rheumatoid arthritis, not recommended by the way, I developed, had to, an iron will to keep going whatever. And my goodness me, that came in quite handy a few years later. Then I went into television. What a bloody poser, look at him. I don't know, he should curl me air then, you know. And thank you. <laughs> it's been a long time since anyone did that to me. In fact, that's the first time, I think. And what that did was show me the inside of the media, shite, and also gave me a, a public profile which was going to lead to something later that wouldn't be ignored, although at the time I wish it was being ignored. And then I went into politics, you can call Green Party politics, and I saw politics from the inside. How it's just a game, how it's irrelevant to human life, and how people who were fighting with each other in the public arena were doing anything but that behind the scenes. And then, bang. 1990. For a year before 1990, when I was still in the Green Party, I felt this presence around me. Even when uh, I was in a room alone, or especially then, I felt this presence around me like I wasn't alone. And this went on for the best part, like I say, of a year. And it got more and more powerful, more and more tangible. Long story short, I tell the, the, the story in the books, I went by a series of synchronistic chances to see a psychic, never seen one in my life before. And I just wanted to go along, I told her I wanted hands-on healing for my arthritis, which was true, but the real reason was, would she pick up what was around me? And I went for a couple of times and it was hands-on healing, very nice, Betty Shine, nice lady. And then the third time, she starts giving me this stuff. Ooh, this is powerful, she says, I've got to close my eyes for this one. And in 1990, out came all this stuff. I'm, I'm presenting the, the, the snooker at the time. You know, I'm, I'm with the BBC still, and out came all this stuff. I was going to go out on a world stage. I was going to reveal great secrets. And basically, there was a shadow across the world that had to be lifted. There was a story that had to be told. And um, I was going to, to tell it, which, when I'm sitting with my bum on that little bench next to her in her healing room, uh, sounded complete bloody craziness. But it's unfolded. And it's unfolded very quickly after that where my life started to change. And I started to come across information that was pushing me in a certain direction. And then in the same year, or just after the same year, 1991, I went to Peru on a just on a whim, on intuition, and ended up having extraordinary experiences 
on a mound in Peru, just down from where that is. This is Ciustani, uh, not far from a place called Puno in southern Peru. Over just out the shot there, on this mound, when this energy was coming in the top of my head, and I was shaking like I was plugged in the mains for about the best part of an hour. And after that, everything changed. It was like a dam bursting in my head, and suddenly concepts, information, perceptions were pouring, pouring into my, into my mind. And for about three months, if you'd have asked what planet I was on, I would definitely have had to check. And that three months was when all this unfolded, what I call my turquoise period. When it was like a computer where you push too many keys and it freezes and says, can't process this, thank you, I'm shutting down. And that's what happened to me basically in that three months. And then, after that time, everything morphed back. And people were coming up to me in the street after all the ridicule, they're saying, you're just like the bloke I used to know. I thought they said you'd gone mad. Well, I may have looked like the bloke that I used to know, they used to know but I wasn't. I was suddenly seeing the world in a completely different way, and I was asking the big questions. Who are we? Where are we? Why is the world as it is? And from that time, the puzzle pieces started to be handed to me in really synchronistic, amazingly synchronistic ways. One of the, if you like, psychic communications that came through Betty Shine said in 1990, sometimes he will say things and wonder where they came from, they will be our words. Another one said knowledge will be put into his mind and at other times he will be led to knowledge. Well, all, all I can say after 20 years of experience since that time is that that famous advert in Britain, it does exactly what it says on the tin, is precisely what has unfolded since then. And that's how the information for all the books and everything has come. Another one was arduous seeking is not necessary. The path is already mapped out. You only have to follow the clues. Again, it says... Uh, or it does what it says on the tin. Exactly that has happened. And it's this process of having insights and then five sense information, names, dates, places, documents, people coming to support that insight, that is what has been unfolding for 20 years. That's where the information has come from um, in the books. And it's been like some, some force has been handing me puzzle pieces um, in virtually the order easiest to understand them. And when you put the puzzle pieces together, the world looks very, very different when you connect the dots. Because what the system wants to do right across society is get people to focus on dots, individual dots, a religion, family, job, football team, whatever. There's nothing wrong with focus as long as you hold peripheral vision and you can see how your focus connects out into other things. That's not what the system wants, it wants that. That focus so you don't have peripheral vision. And as you're trying to go through the maze we call life, the control system has set up endless ways to divert us, confuse us, and to keep us from the understanding that would set us free. And that's what I want to talk about in the first section today. The idea is to keep humanity constantly bewildered so we don't know where we are, who we are, what even reality is. But when you connect the dots, and so many of them, as we'll see today, have on the face of it no connection to some of the others, when you connect the dots, the light goes on and suddenly the picture forms. And what I'm going to do today, I can't fill in endless detail to support what I'm saying, that's in the books. And that's what books are for. Because even in the long, long day that we've got today, and all the hours I'm going to be speaking, I need that time just to connect uh, individual dots and show how they connect together. Because that will make the world we live in phenomenally different to the one that sold us from cradle to grave.